Good morning. Good morning, Peter. Lovely to see you all. Welcome to uh, St. John's. And if uh, this is uh, your first time here or you haven't been for a while, really, really good to see you. Uh, welcome. And to those joining us online, uh, welcome at home as well. Just going to go through a few notices before I hand it over to uh, Brenda, who's leading our service today. Um, first of all, if you haven't picked one of these up yet, this is our programme of services, what we're doing from next week to, um, I think it goes into the 4th of September. So do pick one of those up and you know what we're doing. Um, I'm just going to turn this off. That's better. Also, just remember that uh, we do have a service down at the Blackbourne at 2 p.m. Uh, with our Baptist friends uh, celebrating Pentecost and the Jubilee. Not sure how that's going to go. I'm hoping we're going to be inside, just looking at the weather. But uh, do come, put a coat on and come and support that. It'll be lovely to be down at the Blackbourne and uh, celebrate uh, Pentecost and the Jubilee all together down there. Um, I know that they got on all that kind of sand and uh, it's probably getting rather wet in the, uh, in the rain, but it's supposed to be a beach party as well down there. Uh, looking ahead, we have got uh, the church tidy up on the 25th of June and then after the service on the 26th, we have the church barbecue. Uh, Lisa can take uh, names for that. I think the cost is £7.50 for an adult and fours and overs, I think is £3.00. Yeah, I'm getting a nod. That's good. That's on the 26th of June. Uh, we still have some books we're trying to get rid of upstairs. Uh, today's going to be the last day. Uh, so if you want to go and find any free books, they'll need to be cleared away today because uh, this afternoon we're setting up for this week's funeral. And just talking of that, do remember the family of Oscar, uh, who tragically died in Holland a couple of weeks ago. His funeral is going to be on Wednesday um, at 2 p.m. If you know the family slightly but and would like to attend you might find it easy to go on the live stream because um the church will be packed on wednesday so do remember the cubit family um oh and just one other thing seeing uh, john there we're, we're looking far ahead we're planning a quiz on the 3rd of september so do put that date in your diary uh, john's quizzes are fantastic i'll hand over to uh to brenda well good morning everyone that's a nice answer. Good. It's lovely to see you all. Now, it's our custom here to, on the first Sunday of the month, celebrate the birthdays of anyone who's going to have a birthday. So who's going to have a birthday in June? Is anyone going to have a birthday in June? Or had a birthday. Ooh, or had a birthday in June. Yes, absolutely. We're well in. Right. Ooh, lots of our sweeties going today. Look, Peter. Right. So let's... Sweetie. I'm choosing now, isn't it? It's anything like mine now, isn't it? <laughs> Dave. Okay, excellent. Any more on this side? Oh, it's Grace as well, isn't it? There we are. Sing happy birthday. Okay. Nick. Totally embarrassing at 18, isn't it, to be brought some sweeties? <laughs> It's a very special happy birthday to Nick. I'm sorry, Peter, I didn't see you. <laughs> very special birthday for Nick. He was 18 this week, so let's give him a clap on his own. Okay, and we sing, the words are on the screen. <clears throat> happy birthday to you. To Jesus be true, God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Now, it's another birthday. Any ideas? I know Pam's going to call out in a minute. John, say it louder. Sure. It's the church's birthday today. It's what we call Pentecost. And its other name is the church's birthday. So we're going to sing it to each other because we are the church. And on the way out, 
everybody can have a sweetie. <laughs> so let's sing happy birthday to the church. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Well done. So it's all the individual birthdays. It's the church's birthday. But it's another very special weekend, isn't it? There's another celebration going on this weekend. What's happening this weekend? What are we celebrating? What have you seen hanging outside people's... What is it? Good boy! It's the Queen's Jubilee, isn't it? And how lucky we are to have had a Queen for 70 years. And so we're going to begin our service this morning with a special prayer and our opening prayer for our Queen. <clears throat> we are here to worship God but also to give thanks for our Queen and her 70 years of loyal service. We give thanks for her example of faithfulness to God and her people and pray God's richest blessing upon her. May she be given health and strength to continue to fulfil the promise she made with generosity and joy. Amen. And we're going to stand and sing together <clears throat> our first song. This is the day that the Lord has made. If you've got an instrument, give it a jolly good bang. It's a good one for instruments, this one. Okay, so let's stand and sing. This is the day the Lord has made. <clears throat> One of the first things we do in our services is to say sorry to God for all the things that we've done wrong. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes even if we don't realise we're making them sometimes. But God knows. And so we say sorry to him for all the things we've done, knowing that when we do that, he will forgive us and there'll be all gone, which is absolutely fabulous. After each section, I will say, loving Lord, and I invite you to say, I'm sorry. So, loving Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. In one of our Queen's speeches many years ago, she made this statement 
Forgiveness is at the heart of the Christian faith. And it is in forgiveness that we feel the power of God's love. So let's together open ourselves now to his love by saying sorry for the things that we've done wrong, knowing that he will. So for all the things we have said that have hurt, loving Lord, I'm sorry. For all the things we have thought that were unkind, loving Lord, I'm sorry. For all the things we have done that didn't show your love, loving Lord, I'm sorry. And thank you, Father, that you've heard our sorries and you've forgiven us and you've forgotten them. Amen. Now, I've got a question. What does a party popper and a torch have in common? What is the same about both of these things? Can you think of anything? Oh, what's wrong with my torch? It's got no batteries. Why does it need a battery? To make it work. The battery is the power that makes the torch work. Can you see a string on my party popper? Is there a string there? My party popper's empty. It's got no string. And there's no tissue paper inside. It hasn't got its power. So what is it about both of these things that's the same? That's a torch, even without its battery. That's a party popper, even without its explosive. But what's common? What do they both need? I heard a word over here. Who said power? They both need power power inside them to make them work. And I want you to remember that for a little bit later. And we're going to stand and sing our next song on the screen, Spirit of God, Unseen as the Wind.
Thank you. Please sit down. And as they're sitting down, we've got to say welcome to those who are watching online. And this morning, uh, Pat Goodrich has signed in, Jean and Derek Folkard, welcome, and Joe Lane from Maidstone. So welcome, Joe from Maidstone. It's lovely to have you with us. And all the rest of you online who haven't signed in, it's lovely having you with us. And now we're going to say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. On the birthday of the church, it reminds us we're a family. And so let's say together the family prayer of the church on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And Mark is going to come and read our reading for us this morning. This morning's reading is Acts 20 on page 1116 of the Pew Bible. It's going from verse 7 to 12. Eutychus raised from the dead at Troas. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting, and seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus. He was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. And when he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He is alive. And when he went upstairs again and broke the bread and ate, and after talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we think we are hard done by if we have to sit and listen for 20 minutes. (laughs) We're going to stand now and sing another song. Our God is a great big God. Now there's lots of actions to this as well. So it's our God is a great big God. Our God is a great... Oh, I've got some helpers. Fantastic. Is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. All right. And then he's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. All right. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And we'll pick up the rest as we go. Okay. Off we go. Let's stand um, and sing.
down. Do you know those children's songs? Simple as they might seem, speak absolute volumes about God's love for us. And it always thrills me to see the children singing them, knowing that they are simple truths that they are learning, but simple truths that we are learning or reinforcing in our hearts too. So thank you, children, for joining in and singing and helping us. All right. Excuse me, I want to put this up a bit. Okay, so what a strange story Mark read to us this morning. And I want you to imagine that scene. There were a lot of people, the church, had gathered together to worship. But it wasn't a bit like this. Because they didn't have churches in those days. And so they used to meet together in each other's houses. And can you imagine just us gathered together in somebody's house, in one room, at the end of a hot day. Okay, starting to get the feeling. All crammed in, all hot. And Paul has come to visit this church, and they are so excited. Because the other thing you have to remember is, they didn't have a Bible like we have to tell them the stories of Jesus. They only learned them by people visiting them and telling them what had been going on and telling them what was happening in their own lives and what God was doing for them and other churches. So they were always so excited to get together, to get news of what was going on. And they all met in those days to have a meal. I'm glad I didn't have to prepare it for that number of people, all squashed into a room, but there we are. They met over a meal, and they would eat, and they would discuss, and they would ask questions of the person who'd come to talk to them. It was a very active time. But Paul had so much to say to them, so much to tell them, and he went on and on and on. Would someone like to come and hold my clock for me a minute? Would one of you like to come and hold my clock? No? Okay. Come and hold my clock, one of you. Come on. You can come in a minute with something else. Okay. So, it's not a very expert clock. Paul would have started at about six o'clock. One hour. Two hours. Three hours. Four hours. Five hours. Six hours. And he got to midnight. And the room was hot. Thank you, sweetheart. And they were getting tired because it was warm. But the other thing was, of course, it was getting dark. So they'd had to light the lamps. And they were oil lamps, which just didn't give off light. They gave off lots of lovely heat as well. Okay, so put yourself in this position. A church service crowded in a small room in somebody's house, plenty to eat, very warm, and Paul's voice going on 
and on. How do you think you would start to feel? A little bit sleepy? A little bit sleepy. When I was looking up some different things about this, uh, for this service, I came across this little couplet which I thought was lovely, and I'm just going to share with you. Paul wouldn't have heard it, but it might have fitted. Lord, fill my mouth with worthwhile stuff and nudge me when I've said enough. <laughs> Anyone wants to come up and give me a nudge, you're very welcome. <laughs> and in this hot, stuffy, sweaty, probably a bit smelly room was a little boy. They reckon he was somewhere between 12 and 14. And he'd come to hear about Jesus. And he'd found himself a little seat on the windowsill where the air was coming through a little bit. Well, so he hoped. But do you know what Eutychus did? What did Eutychus do? <coughs> Eutychus fell asleep. Another little aside, I saw a lovely cartoon of ways people fall asleep in church. You have your side head droppers, apparently, going... You have those who are holding a Bible and fall asleep into their Bible because that looks good. And then you have those who unashamedly just drop their heads and go to sleep. But poor Eutychus fell asleep and he started to move. He lost his balance. And all of a sudden, poor Eutychus fell out of the window. And it was three floors up. It was a long way down. Of course, the people rushed out to go and see what had happened to Eutychus. We have to remember that among those people there was Luke, who was writing this story. Now, Luke was a doctor. And when Luke wrote this story, he said quite clearly, when they got to Eutychus, he was dead. So Paul stopped his preaching, came running down, and can you remember what he did? What did he do? He laid on him and put his arms round him. And Eutychus came back to life. How amazing was that? Wouldn't you have thought that there'd been great rejoicing, that the party would have changed tack and there'd have been a rejoicing? Oh no. Paul goes back upstairs and he carries on preaching. And this is midnight, remember, and he preached until daybreak. There's a man who had a story to tell. But you see, that story for me leaves me with one big question. I need someone to come and hold some things for me. Who's coming up? Come on then. And this is the question. I need you as well. Can you hold that up nice and high for me? That's it. Good boy. What's the beginning of the question? How? Did? Anyone want to hold one? Gavin? Gavin? Love a little helper coming up. You come, jump up here. That's it, good boy. Oh, you are a good sister coming to help him. Would you hold the last one for me as well, please? A nice, big, and high. Hold it up. What's the question it leaves me with? Hold them nice and high. About Paul and bringing Eutychus back to life. How? Did he do that? Question. How did Paul do that? 
thank you very much. You can pop back now. I might need that question again, so hang on to them, okay? I might need you to come back later with those questions. And the simple answer is what we're celebrating today in the church. The power of the Holy Spirit. You see, years beforehand, Jesus had been living with his disciples. But there came a day that we remembered last week when Jesus had to go back to heaven to be with his Father. And he left the disciples, well, to make their own decisions, to do their own thing. They hadn't got Jesus there to encourage them, to help them, to say, well done. Now, go and do this. Oh, why don't you try that? And they were terrified. They had a job to do that they were not equipped to do. They were a bit like the torch without the battery, or the party popper without the explosive. They were Jesus' disciples, they were his followers. But they didn't have what they needed to carry on his work. The church could have died at that moment. Do you realize the church could have stopped? We wouldn't be here. But God had another plan. And he had an almighty plan. He said, I'm going to use those people. And as they were gathered together one day, in a room, on their own, afraid, wondering what to do, all of a sudden, there was an almighty wind. Can we all make a noise like a wind? And it blew through the room. And as they turned and looked at each other, they could see what looked like flames above each other's head. The Holy Spirit had fallen on that group of Christians. God knew that they needed his power to complete the work that he had prepared for them to do. So now, they were no longer like a torch without a battery. They worked. They were no longer like a party popper without it, out its explosion. They had the power that they needed. And it was that same Holy Spirit working in Paul years later, when Eutychus fell out the window. It was that power that Paul had in his life that brought Eutychus back to life when Paul laid his arms round him. It was that power in Paul's life, bubbling up, that made him talk for so long because he was so excited about Jesus. And he wanted all of the others to know. And it was the spirit bubbling up inside him that urged him to let all those people in Troas know everything that God was doing in his life and in the life of the church. So I was got to that point in my thinking I suddenly stopped and I thought, when was the last time I felt like that? When was the last time that the joy of Jesus bubbled up in my life in such a way that I wanted to get out and talk to people?
And I realized I was a little bit like this one. Or the empty party popper. I think it's something we all need to ask ourselves. Are we like an empty torch without a power source as a Christian? We can still be a Christian, okay? But have we got our power source? You know, the gift of the Holy Spirit is offered to each of us today. What God did all those years ago, 2,000 years ago, he will do again. God wants us to be filled with his power so that we can live lives that speak of his love and his power to others. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, unpredictable as the wind, unquenchable as fire, yet gentle as a dove. Please come now, and by your gracious power, breathe new energy into my life, and new life into my soul. Help me to open up my life more fully to the presence of your Spirit, so that I may know you better and be equipped for whatever you call me to do. Amen. Children, can you bring out your question again? Can we sing? Spirit of the living God. What was the question? You've got, oh, that, oh, you've got the... Thank you. Pick up all the litter. It came out. It, came out. it did, didn't it? Out of the popper. It did. What was the question? How did he do that? How did he do it? How did he do it? The power of the Holy Spirit. How can we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit we're going to sing a song now that David plays very often during communion when he's on the organ we haven't got the words on the screen but it's very simple it's spirit of the living God fall afresh on me spirit of the living God oh Peter's got it up thank you Peter right it's more of a prayer and I want us to finish this session with this prayer. Okay. Twice through, yeah. And so we'll stay. It's a prayer. <coughs>
we're going to sing another lovely song that we can use our instruments with. We are marching in the light of God and we end up moving in the power of God. So let's stand and sing this song. Got your instruments ready? Good. at Pentecost and the Platinum Jubilee. When I say, Spirit of the living God, you respond with, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fall afresh afresh on me. As the body of Christ in this village, we pray for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit on your church here and throughout the world for a willingness to be changed and made new, that we might be the people you have always intended us to be. Spirit of the living God, fall fall afresh on me. For a healing of all nations, a desire for truth, honesty and openness in our leaders. For peace among nations, we continue to pray for the Ukraine peace in our own land, peace in our homes. Lord, make us peacemakers. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. For those who worry or are anxious, for those who feel guilty and need to know your forgiveness, for those who are sick or in pain, for those whose loves have lives have been turned upside down and are grieving. We pray especially for Alex, Rob and Natasha Cubitt as they grieve the death of Oscar and prepare for his funeral. And we pray for those affected by the school massacre and hospital shootings in America. Lord, use us to bring your love and healing to your world. Spirit of the living God, Fall Fall afresh afresh on me. This morning we come to say thank you for our Queen. Thank you for her selflessness and 70 years of service to our country. Thank you for her faith in you. May it continue to sustain and strengthen her. 
May your spirit be upon her and bless her, we pray. For your love and generosity to us, we want to say thank you. For all you have in store for us and for all your promises, we thank you. Take me, melt me, mould me, fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Amen. And we're going to stand to sing our last song this morning, To God be the glory, great things he has done. taking just a minute or two to pray for friends who we know need to know God's love and who need to find him as their saviour. And some people have put knots on cords to remind them and to pray for each person. So we're just going to take two minutes now just to be silent to pray for those people that you have on your cord or in your heart.
Thank you, Lord, that you have heard each person named before you. We pray that you will take them, put your arms around them, and show them that you are their friend. Amen. If you stay sitting, we're just going to watch a short video of a song that's been written especially for the Jubilee. Having been forgiven and ask God for his Holy Spirit to fill our lives. Let's go out to share the good news of his love, his joy and his peace with all we meet. And so may the abundant blessings of God the Father, God the Son 
and God the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. People of God, rise up and serve. Amen.